Come here. Come here, you fluffy little fluffer. Oh, we filming. Hello, everybody. Recently, I took a poll asking which tropes you'd like me to cover next, and we got a landslide vote. You guys want me to complain about terrible heroes and heroines, and I gotta say, I'm right there with ya. Everyone knows I love a good hero's journey, but some writers be fucking shit up. So let's discuss. Before I get started, I wanted to give a huge thank you to my all-time favorite learning platform, Skillshare, who has generously sponsored today's video. I've been working with Skillshare for a while now, and I have loved the process. They have been incredibly supportive of my platform, and they have made it so much easier for me to post regular content for you guys. Skillshare is an online learning platform specifically designed for creators. That means designers, artists, writers, whatever. This platform was designed for you. They have over 25,000 classes covering a range of topics. I personally enjoy their classes on creative writing, business, and marketing. However, they also have classes on drawing, public speaking, web design, and so on. The last class I took on Skillshare was Writing Flash Fiction by fellow author and YouTuber Hannah Lee Kidder. I definitely recommend checking it out. It was amazing and so informative. I also have a couple of classes available on Skillshare. I've got one all about how to grow your author platform and another breaking down the book release process step by step. So if you're looking to build an audience or if you want to release your novel the right way, you should totally check it out. Skillshare's got some goodies just for you. Stick around until the end of this video to find out more. First, we've got some bitching to do. I'm breaking down the 10 hero tropes that need to be killed and burned to the ground. Cause they suck. Number one, the hero with the dead wife. Everyone knows about the woman in the refrigerator. Anyone with any taste hates the woman in the refrigerator. But this trope is so much more than that. There is an entire MC trope surrounding a hero with a dead wife, and people keep writing about him over and over again. His wife died, it's usually murder, and the culprit is, you guessed it, his enemies. He becomes cold and hardened, jaded to the point where he rarely, if ever, expresses any human emotion. But this is a good thing because emotionally unavailable men are like, so hot. Of course, he's gonna fight the good fight against the baddies. He'll probably accumulate a band of loyal, skilled followers because man, that one note dead-eyed bastard is cool, am I right? Along the way, he'll screw lots of gorgeous women who are madly in love with him, but he can never commit himself to them because remember, he's damaged goods. If this character sounds familiar, it's because he's the lead in 50% of all actions adventure stories and he needs to retire yesterday. Number two, wild red hair. Nowadays you can usually spot the heroine of a story based on her wild red curly hair. You see, her hair is a metaphor. It's wild because she's a free spirit. She can't be tamed. I don't know if you know this, but hair always dictates personality. For example, my hair is brown because I'm a piece of shit. Next, her hair is curly because someone with straight hair probably wrote her. This chick lives in medieval Europe with zero access to styling balms, which means she probably looks like shit. Lastly, her hair is red because it's unique, just like she is along with every other heroine who has the same hair color and personality as she does. But then when you see the author's face claims for her, it's gonna be some hot blonde chick with bottle red, because the natural redheads are too pale, ew. Here's an idea, if you don't like the way redheads look, give them a different hair color, dummy. Number three, the grizzled, alcoholic anti-hero. His life's hard, the road is tough, and he is not your goddamn hero, all right? You can tell by the whiskers on his face and the empty bottles of alcohol in his dingy apartment. They're empty because he drank them, in case you didn't get that. He's not a normal hero, he's a cool hero. And sometimes he's even edgier than a five o'clock shadow and scotch neat. His scotch is neat because everyone's heard of scotch on the rocks, it's too cliche. 
and he's not a cliche. Sometimes this anti-hero takes pills, snorts cocaine, or even beats his wife. Cause nothing's more original than a white dude with an inferiority complex who treats women like shit. I wanna be just like him. So cool. Number four, but I don't wanna be this impossibly cool thing. A lot of times the hero faces an impossible dilemma, something that a normal person would struggle to overcome. Maybe they discover abilities that come with a steep price. Usually their initial response is to nope on out of there, which makes total sense. Then there are situations where the hero is rewarded some impossibly cool thing, powers, magic, a royal birthright, a connection to the gods, and their first response is, no, it can't be true. I'm just a regular teenager. All I want to do is live a normal life. No one wants to live a normal life. Unless you have grown up destitute or in dire circumstances, normal is not going to be your goal. Give these powers some consequences or else no one's gonna buy the hissy fit. Number five, the princess who is bad at princessing. She wants to be a good princess, the best princess the land has ever seen, but she's just such a disaster. Her hair is never in the proper place, she's terrible at curtsying, and these dresses are just too dang tight. Aurora, you've dirtied your gown yet again. But Mama, I can't help it. I love riding horses so very much. Horses aren't for princesses, Aurora. You should know that by now. But Mama, I love riding with boys. I love the feeling of the wind in my hairs and a strong, powerful force between my legs. That sounded sexual. Pretend it didn't. My sweet daughter, you're a woman now. Every princess from every fictional kingdom in the history of literature is expected to behave in the exact same manner. There's a status quo to uphold, and for the sake of regurgitating tired plots, our author really needs you to suck at sipping tea, even though anyone with hands can do it. But Mama! Silence, Aurora. You've disappointed me for far too long. Number six. Femininity is for pussies. Like our last point, our heroine isn't remotely feminine, but that's why she's our leading lady. She's not like other girls. Her strength comes from her masculinity. She's one of the guys. Girly stuff is for airheads. She'll remind you of that at least twice a chapter. I am completely fine with a female MC who is not remotely feminine, but do we need to vilify femininity in order to validate her existence? A lot of feminine conventions are tough as shit. You know what I see when I look at heels? Danger. This ain't just sexy, it's a goddamn weapon. Yeah, manicures are pretty, but with stiletto nails, I could claw your face off. Back up, bitch! Femininity and weakness are not synonymous. Stop trying to make it happen. No one buys it. Number seven, it's just a scratch. It's hard writing action scenes in fiction because any injury sustained could potentially be fatal. This is why so many writers have plot devices like healing magic or super strength. It makes it so that you can rough up your characters without them keeling over. Then there are writers who cut off their regular human character's arm and go, whoopsie, bet that tickled. Then the character continues to fight the battle. How? How are they not writhing on the ground in shock? How have they not passed out from blood loss? I see this done with all kinds of injuries. Do you know how serious an arrow wound is? Those things will fuck you up. Unless your character is immortal or magical, I expect you to treat their serious injuries seriously. Number eight, save her from her shitty boyfriend. Our hero is madly in love with the perfect woman. She's smart and beautiful and so, so kind. But oh my god, her boyfriend is such a dick. Like we're talking cartoon level douchebag. Clearly our hero has to save her from her awful relationship. How else will she get out of it? Certainly not of her own volition. I hate this trope because no matter the circumstance, it makes the female love interest look so, so bad. Either she 
has no idea her boyfriend's an asshole, in which case she is mind-numbingly stupid, or she knows he's an asshole and she's perfectly fine with it. You know who's happy to fuck an asshole? Another asshole. It takes a true garbage human to be attracted to someone who happily degrades other people right in front of them. Guess who's not in love with your love interest? This lady. Number nine, the useless warrior woman. I love a kick-ass female character, and even better, she doesn't need a man to save her. Well, except when she's in danger, which is literally all the time. How the hell do you get off writing a soldier, fighter, or most commonly an assassin who is so adamant that she needs no help at all and yet never once proves it. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying she can't stumble from time to time. The love interest can swoop in once or twice. I'm cool with it, it's swoony. But every goddamn time, she was described as lethal. You done goofed up there, writer, cause I'm not believing any of that shit. And number 10, fuck all the hoes. Our main guy slays all the baddies and fucks all the bitches. Of course he does. I'm not saying our hero can't get laid, but does he have to put it in everything? At that point, he's just asking for syphilis. And nine times out of ten, the dude is a chauvinist and a womanizer. Wonderful! How insecure are these writers that they need to live through a fictional character getting his fictional dick fictionally wet? The only people who are impressed by this cliche are old eggshell ego men, and they're gonna die pretty soon. Who are you gonna market these books to then? So that's all I got for you today. If you're writing heroes or heroines like this, stop it. I can't take it anymore. A huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. They have my back and I love them for it. If you're interested in learning more about creative writing or the business end of publishing, I highly recommend Skillshare. They're super cheap. An annual subscription is less than 10 bucks a month. But you can get two months of Skillshare Premium for free by clicking the link below. Only the first 500 people are gonna get in on this offer, so no dicking around okay? Click the link. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I post new videos on Wednesdays and if you want to be alerted as soon as they upload, ring that bell. The Savior Champion is available in ebook, paperback, hardback, signed hardback, as well as audiobook. If you are new to audiobook, you can listen to The Savior Champion for free on Audible. All of the links are listed below. And be sure to follow me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Tumblr, Facebook, and of course you can tweet me at Jenna Moresi. Bye! This is Wimbledon. If you haven't subscribed to Jenna's channel, then by all means, go for it. The people will love you for it. Go on, press the button, ding that bell. See you soon.